Sometimes it's harder to get executed on a lot of penny stocks. This is a common question I get. People are like, trade penny stocks, aren't you scared to get tough executions? You trade liquid penny stocks, okay? I'm buying like 3,000, 5,000 shares of a stock trading three, five, 20 million shares. What's up, Tim Sykes here again in cold Texas. That's why I need a hat. Texas is supposed to be warm, but right now it's not. Here with Bryce, just crossed over a million dollars. How does it feel? Feels good. Feels good. I'm what, happy. What are you doing differently in the two hours since you've now become a millionaire? How's your life changed? What are you doing? What did you just do differently? Did you go to a, a fast food place and you're like, I'm going to order everything? I did order more coffees, technically, than I normally order at the place I go to for coffee. There yeah. you go. I normally order one. We got like six. Calm down. Don't get cocky. I know. I Secondly, know. how does it feel to have your best friend leave five minutes before you cross the milestone that you've been searching for for the past five plus years? I mean, he... he I texted him. He did text me. But the first text, the first text I got was, tell him it took too long. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said congratulations like five minutes after that, that so all right i want everyone leaving a comment right now say congratulations to bryce f you matt okay <laughs> you five don't even... years together they're they're literally roommates they're trying all these things they're writing essays for like football players they're trying everything <laughs> this guy makes over a million dollars Matt's like sorry you took too long <laughs> He left five minutes before it happened. I told him to come back because I know I'm already at the gym. Daddy, daddy no more. <laughs> Broke Bryce no more. <laughs> Boom, that's my rapper name. I just don't understand how, like, if it was my best friend who's crossing a million dollars, I would just want to be there for that moment. Are you just not sentimental? Are you just cruel? What, what is this? <laughs> I don't know. My best sentiment. He doesn't know. But I told him congratulations. It's awesome. I'll share the password with you, even though you don't deserve it. Thank you. <laughs> I know. It popped up on my screen. I'm sharing the password. <laughs> serious, you know, let's be serious for a second. Um, very cool moment where, you know, you cross the million. You've been trying so hard for so long. This is the moment you're over a million dollars. Come on. Are you over a million? Woo! Are you over a million? <laughs> yeah. Yo. Congrats, buddy. Look at this. GNS over a million. Did you do it? I did it. Woo! It's a party in the USA. Yo, this is pretty sick. All right, I've I, I, I evolved my caffeine. Oh, 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 oh. We finally got a student who crossed a million on camera. You, we called your mom. Yeah. Like, pretty cool. Your family is loving it. The community is loving it. What can you say to people, you know, most people watching this want to be you, right? Most people watching this want to make a million dollars. What's like the number one tip that you can give them to like help push them along on their journey? Ooh. Um, it's, I mean, if, you, if you're trying to do this through trading, you want to be a millionaire trader. And I, I've, I, my answer would depend so much on where you are in your journey. But I think whether you are starting off today or whether you haven't even started yet and you just got introduced to the stock market or whether you've made money and you're consistent. Um, the number one thing you need to do is just stop actually focusing on that dollar amount and start focusing on taking the good trades because, well, the dollar amount seems so cool. Um, I, I only think I've taken, I looked it up the other day, seven or eight trades that total that were more than $10,000 gains, right? My biggest trade ever is $33,000. And my top 10 trade or top seven trades are over $10,000. It was a lot of smaller wins that really added up. Uh, and because again, I was always, I've always been just more focused on doing what works for me. And whether it takes me a year, whether it takes me five years, whether it takes me 10, like that process will get me there as long as I stay consistent throughout the whole way. So stop focusing on the dollar amounts, focus on doing the right thing time and time again. Um, and whether that's in trading, whether that's, in any other area of life that's gonna help you uh, reach your goals, in my opinion. It has so far for me in basically every area I've kind of applied that mindset to trading first and foremost. We have a clip that we're gonna insert here. Find this clip when you literally were like crossing a million and you were trying to give it more time, more time. Yeah. And I was like, dude, just lock it in. And you actually sold right at the day high. Yeah. And the stock is down, what? How much more is it down? It's, let's see here. No, I mean, yeah, I'd be down. If I held it, I'd be down 1300 bucks. If I held it to where it is now, you know? I mean, it would. 
I agree with that. I think this could squeeze, but that's yeah, why I have small, it, that's so why I have small a, size here's for Here's the thing, right? So it could squeeze if it can get over seven. Yeah. But it's facing massive resistance in the 690s midday. So, like, you just have to, like, understand. You could lock it in. What is this, 200? 200. I, I, I You're know. You're $100 away? Wait, 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 Tim. Hold on. It's, it's doing it. It's doing it. It's doing, doing it. it. It's at seven. Dude. Dude. I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to market, dude, market, dude. edit, market, don't, market. Don't use a market order. Limit. Just limit order. Yeah, but I'm on my phone. 704. 704. Take it. I'm trying. Take it. It's and down in your Just for the record, you know, your selfish best friend did hold it because he wasn't yeah. here for me to be in his ear to like. <laughs> Just double whammy. Force it. No, I mean, listen, it's karma. It's, it's up to you. That's, that's, that's between you and your God. Um, you know. What have you learned from me where has it, has it changed the way that you trade? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if I'm being honest, my best trades have kind of all come from your mindset of locking, like locking your gains when you've got them. Why um, do you think it's so hard for so many people to do that? Is it the adrenaline, the excitement, like the trading community where everyone wants to be like a hero and show big screenshots? Yeah, I mean, every time I end up I'm trying to go for my biggest gain, I mean, that, that sense in itself should be a clear void, right? I'm going for my biggest, my biggest trade. That's the wrong mindset. My biggest trades, with the exception of a select few, which I did size up for, uh, I did spend extra, extra time preparing for, but most of my biggest trades are ones that I realistically, um, it might've been a really hot stock that I traded three or four times throughout the day, taking profit quickly at each time and just getting in at a really key area versus ones where I, held the stock all day and then sold right at the high of the day and then maybe it came back down. And I mean, even, do you remember, this was a long time ago for anyone watching this, VRPX, remember that stock that ran from like $2 up to 30 something? I remember it. I had built up my largest ever position. Um, this was my worst loss, so it's kind of, or my most painful loss. Um, I'd been building into that stock for two weeks, adding 2,000 shares, 2,000 shares, and I had a risk level, I think the risk level was like 407. It dropped down to 419. I got really scared. Panic sold 20,000 shares from like a $4 average. And the next day, it gapped up to nine and then ran to 30. There's so the chart. There's the, there's the chart right it's there. down to 80 cents. Now. I, I sold the day before it gapped up um, in, the, in the airport. Pull up a two year chart of VRPX. And people need to see this. This is a classic supernova, two yeah. years. And to be fair, my thesis was spot on. I, every, I, I had prepared for that trade. I'd been building into the trade. My problem is I'd gotten in with so much size because I was like, can you imagine if this gaps up? My, my plan was to sell at $7 and I think it might've been opened above $7 the day it gapped up. But why I, I was focusing all on the wrong aspect and what I needed to be focusing on was if this trade doesn't work, how much am I going to lose? Because that means if this trade does work, I just need to make sure that that risk, I'm making more than that, ideally two to three times more. Um, if it's a trade where I have a big plan on it, maybe I go for higher, but I, I was thinking, how much am I going to make if this trade's right? Instead, I lost 10 grand. I cut that day for a $10,000 loss, and I did technically, the day it gapped up, I traded it again and made another 10 grand on it, but now for two weeks worth of building into a position, two weeks worth of not following my rules, I let, I either one, I sold a stock where I would have made a lot of money had I held onto it and respected my risk, but number two, I had to trade back that $10,000 gain just to break even. Yeah. So it's kind of a double whammy. Um, and I don't remember exactly how I got onto that, but- uh, What's the, the big mistake there? Well, the big mistake was, I mean, there are a lot of big mistakes. Oversizing, oh yeah, and because like I said, I normally don't build into a trade and I wasn't comfortable trading that way. I normally like to scalp. I'm in a trade for a few minutes, maybe 30 minutes. That trade I was in for a few weeks and I didn't know how to handle it. Um, and you know, realistically, my best trades have come from being very quick, getting in and out of the in and out of the stock that's moving fast. Look, you you learn what you're good at over time. The ones that you're good at, that's when you size in. Mm -hmm. By all means, try new strategies, but take smaller size because if you take big size on a strategy you don't know inside and out, your brain is going to freak out because you're going to start to realize the risks that you're taking. And you're it's a new strategy, so you're unfamiliar with how it's going to play out. Well, and truthfully. I love using that VRPX example because again, I, I it, actually I had 20,000 shares and I was scared. Had I had even half of that size, I was still, I, my conviction was there. 
um, the setup was there, my risk tolerance wasn't. Um, and so had I built in with half the size, that still, I would never have held it till probably even over 10. But I mean, that alone, half size trade, something I'm confident, comfortable win, uh, with, that still could have been a 50 or $60,000 win. It could have been my biggest trade, yet I let size and I let this need of trying to advance and evolve as a trader into someone who's taking these big setups. So this is the problem I see with the trading industry. Um, you know, you have these screenshot heroes that everyone loves. Everyone wants the big screenshot. You want the big trophy. You want the round of applause from like the trading community. I am like <laughs> universally despised by big traders because I trade in small size. I encourage small size. I think it's the best for learning. Um, and this whole mindset to go for the home run, to go for something big, I think is counterproductive uh, when you're learning. By all means, later on, go off, you're free, I'm just training wheels. I'm like your kindergarten teacher. I'm like the parent being like, eat your broccoli, eat your greens. Yeah. And like the big traders are like, no, I don't wanna eat my greens, I want cocaine. Like, you know, I'm trying to keep you healthy rather than drug addicted like too many in this industry. They want the adrenaline rush, that's what trading is for them. For me and for all my millionaire students, I think that you'd be surprised you do better with small size because you give it more patience. You, you know, it's, it's not about the money. Like it's going back to what we started. It's process over profits. You can be more disciplined. And sometimes like it's not to say that you always have to have patience. Today, I did two trades. I made seven grand on one. My go-to over the weekend pattern, first green day with a news catalyst, nailed it. Second trade, they didn't sell at the top, but took the meat of the move. Second trade, small speculative dip buy, cut losses quickly, lost 200 bucks. I went bigger with my go-to play, and I went smaller with my speculative play. Win-win. This is the thing, right? Like, people always are afraid of losses. They're like, they look down on like, you know, small trades. Like, if you're convinced, why not go big? Because I'm not convinced, because it's speculative. Yep. And it's okay to spe take speculative trades with small size. And well, if you want, I mean, I'm trying, I keep thinking back now of all the times, I mean, I had one exception trade um, and that was my NEGG trade from back, when did that happen? Last summer. Okay. Um, and I think back and that was my $33,000 trade. I had 5,000 shares of neg at $48 a share. Like it was just because I was sized up on it. Not because I let the trade run some crazy amount. And I did do a really good job at letting it run intraday, but I mean, it was, I, had a, I also had a $250,000 position on a stock that was moving a lot. So no wonder I made more money when the trade worked. When on a stock like GTII that we, um, you know, that we gapped over the weekend, it had that, uh, it was a breaking news play, hot sector, really nice first green day, kept it simple. And I still used decent size, but it was nothing like that. And yet I still was able to make nearly $5,000 on it. I have not had a trade where I've come close to $33,000 since NEG. I wish over the last probably year, really, I had just focused on taking more GTII type of plays that I don't need to have crazy size on crazy risk. I could have taken six of those trades and made the same amount of money as NEG. Instead, I tried, to, I tried to, I don't do it nearly as much anymore, but I try to go for these massive wins that either end up turning into I was risking maybe five or 10 grand. And by the time all is said and done, I made five or 10 grand on it. So I compare it to ski ball. Can we insert a picture of ski ball, right? Come on in, look at this guy. We're celebrating with tequila. We're gonna do that. Can we, can we drink on YouTube? I don't know what the rules are with alcohol. I feel like yeah. it's gonna have like a warning or something. Some like a I'm drinking coffee. coffee. Well, now we tell him what we're having though, but it I is see, I see this guy with his little cups and this fancy, fancy tequila. Let me finish this thought, hold on. Important <laughs> thought right here. Um, ski ball, like, you know, have you, have you ever played ski ball? Oh, yeah. You either go up the center, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or the 200s on the top and right, left. Everyone wants to win the 100. It's a crappy odd yeah. situation. I always go up the middle, 30, 40, 50 is my goal. It's less, but it's easier. It, don't do, don't ruin our video. Don't ruin our video. Can we show this? I don't know if we can show this. I, I, as long as we're not drinking it. Can we're not drinking it. We're yeah. not drinking it on camera. Can I guess what it is? I know what it is. What is it? It's like a Casa Azul. Casa Azul what? But it's Azul like... Platinum? What is it? Azul Negro or something. It's like 5,000. Oh. Let me throw it against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. I'll take it. <laughs> you just lick it against the wall like, it's good, it's good. 
This is five thousand. Yeah, I've seen that on I've seen that on the shelf before, and I've always wanted to try a sip of it. So I guess today will be the day. Well, now you've earned it, but we'll do it off camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This That's is a, cool. I like your ski ball analogy. I've never heard you say that. That's a, I've said it many times. You I, need to study more. I know. I have now been that you're that a millionaire. Lately. Now that you're retired, you know you can. <laughs> now you can. <laughs> Look at this. Look what we got for the new millionaire here. We got the new tequila. You don't have to chug water anymore. Perfect. Here okay. you go, buddy. Let's have a good night. Right. Congratulations. <laughs> Calm down. You're not but chugging this. We'll see. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Smile. Beautiful. <laughs> Ski ball is a good analogy. You don't have to go big. And this is actually, we said this with several millionaires. Like I said this with uh, Jack Schwartz a few weeks ago um, on camera somewhere or maybe off camera. I don't know. No, we we're on camera in Seattle. When you size down, you can focus more on the play. Like, okay, I want to take the meat of the move. I'm going to try to be disciplined on my entry and exit. You just don't need to like go for a home run. And if you take big size, I'll tell you this, I've taken big size before, I've, I've won big, I've lost big. Um, there is an adrenaline rush, but you're not gonna be as disciplined to the pattern as you should be because the money gets in the way. Like I know a lot of traders who actually turn off their profit and loss, even if they take big size, it's a lot of discipline and I don't recommend it because they want to give the chart time. When money gets involved, you don't give the chart time. Like sometimes like if I take a big position and same thing like with Jack Kellogg, like when he's trading the triple Q's and the ETFs, he's taking 500, $700,000 positions, making 10, 20 K percentage wise is crap, but he's still making 10 or 20 K in right. a few minutes. Right. No, exactly. It's well, I, I always think back to, because I had a similar experience. What was the ticker? When you were early on back in New York City kind of thing and you had your hedge fund and you it was your five hundred thousand dollar loss. What Signacy ever... transactions, C Y G T. So I had a it wasn't as big, but it felt the same where uh because your problem was a you had so much size and a lack of Correct. liquidity, right? I fell in love so, with the technology, the company, I couldn't cut losses even if I wanted to. And there was an old ticker, um S G O C, it's now T R O O, and there was I had this big plan, it was setting up for months and I it had a morning spike and I actually, I normally don't buy into a morning spike. I like to wait for the consolidation afterwards, after that morning spike, after the breakout, and then go for, in my opinion, the more predictable me to the move where yep. there's more liquidity. Well, as you see that morning, I actually, turns out I was the volume that spiked it up. Um, it was probably 20 or 30%. And so me selling dumped it back down. I, I lost. You didn't it, realize you lost track of your position yep. size and you lost track of perspective. It's very easy to lose track of perspective when you're greedy, when you're thinking about the goals. How much did you lose? I think it was around 13 grand. Um, I mean, it, you, you look at my executions. I sold the entire way down and, and it did nothing all day. <laughs> it, was, it was me. You and don't want to be more than one or 2% of daily volume. Yeah. Um, and also like there's different stocks with different executions. Like sometimes it's harder to get executed on a lot of penny stocks. This is a common question I get. People are like, trade penny stocks. Aren't you scared to get tough executions? You trade liquid penny stocks, okay? <laughs> I'm buying like 3,000, 5,000 shares of a stock trading three, five, 20 million shares. Um, you know, there's like this, this thing like we're like, oh, Sykes, you're all the liquidity. I'm like a very small percentage. It's, yeah. it's laughable, but these are the conspiracy theories spread by like promoters and liars in this industry. I want to stay small. Um, I think that it's good to trade small for me as a teacher because I teach safety first. I think it's good for students to learn to trade small. You can always be more aggressive later on, but 99.9% .9 of you watching this are not ready to size up. It might not be the hottest market, you might not have enough experience. There's a million reasons why, you know, you don't size up, especially right now in early 2023. We both sized up a little on GTI. A little. I didn't even know like he was long. I didn't, he didn't know I was long. It was just a good setup. But like, again, people in the chat room, like I took like a $30,000 position. Normally I take like $5,000 position. People are like, oh, be careful. I'm like, you guys realize I can take like a $5 million position if I really wanted to. I'm trading like with a grain of rice. Yeah. I'm like a rice trader. Here's a grain of rice. Like any self-respecting multimillionaire trader would not trade this small, but I'm not just any self-respecting millionaire trader. I'm here to teach you the process. So I suck it up. Adrenaline rush, gone completely. I get a greater adrenaline rush from you hitting a million, right? Yeah, yeah. That was pretty cool. And it, we didn't plan this, understand, like we've been waiting for this for how long, right? Oh, a year, a year now, a year basically.
And this is the crazy thing. Like we had a hot market and all of us like were hitting new milestones. And it was just a question of like how long the hot market would last versus like what milestone you would hit. And the hot market ended before you hit a, mu- a million. Yep. Yep. And can I speak to that yeah, quick? Because for anyone who is, whether again, whether you're brand new, whether you haven't even started trading yet, or whether you've maybe gone through a market cycle or two, um, and you just haven't hit the goals you want to. One thing that I, every time I look back on the hot, hot market, I always think, I wish I had pushed it harder. I wish I had done this. I wish I had done that. And now that I'm here, I still do wish those things, but that's like me saying, I wish I bought at the bottom and sold at the top every time. You're not going to time the market 100% perfectly, but if you can be as prepared as you can be for when it heats up, you're going to be better off and more prepared. And I mean, I'm ready for whenever the market gets really, truly hot again. And that could be a few more, probably a few more months or, I mean, it's hot right now. He's turning 25 in a week. He's got a whole life ahead of him. Wish him a happy birthday in the comments. We have to actually get going. Um, But one thing I wanted to add before this, just what you brought up where you're saying you wish you had pushed it. Kyle Williams, another one of uh, my millionaire students told me like we're in Utah and he's like, I really wish I had pushed it more. I was like, Kyle, you're up like $4 million. Like four years ago, you had like $6,000 to your name. If you make a few million dollars trading penny stocks, you've pushed it. Okay. So think about that. You can always push it later on. Everyone's young for the most part. If you're old, don't even trade. Just go live your life because you don't have that much longer. We got to get going. Click the link below. Join the challenge if you want more live webinars. Congrats to this guy. Ah! Ah!